Hi and welcome to the channel. I'll try not to keep this video going too long. It's just a quick recap really, but I found it an interesting recap that uh, I thought I'd better bring to the channel uh, straight away really um, to let people know uh, that uh, replacing a few transistors that they can make a difference in the sound, not just the capacitors, a transistor, a transistor replacement here has definitely made a difference uh, in the sound of this Sansui receiver. Just want to talk about that, but I want to let you know first of all is what else I've done so you're right up to speed what's happened with this. You know, don't just think I've just replaced the transistor. I've done other little bits and pieces, but I don't really have made much difference, to be honest with you. I think the transistors made the most difference, but they may have just come into the equation just a little bit. So I want to make sure I mention them. Is that I've got this receiver, I wasn't too pleased with it. The sound didn't sound quite right. The bass was booming, the top end was, was not great. Um, it, it was very elevated kind of thing. You, you can go and watch the review of that. I'll put a link at the top to my review of this, but I, I didn't really go too much into it because I was disappointed with it. And, and, the, and the video is mainly about, you know, maybe don't, you know, not always going to get something better. Uh, if you go up the level, you, you can kind of get um, a unit that's not quite right kind of thing. Some work needs being done to it. It's not a simple case of going and buying it. And it's going to be all working lovely some extra work may be required and it's quite amazing really when you think about it, these units are 50 plus years old and they're still working and also we're getting a sound out of them you know what i mean it's, it's pretty amazing really when you think about it. i don't think you've got to get anything these days that's 50 you know from now on was 50 years time all these microchip stuff and all that you're going to plug it in it and it works you get a load of these little microchips all seem to go wrong and all that kind of stuff they're compacting a lot into one little unit uh, and over a period of time, these, these little processes kind of fail. You, you see it all over the place uh, with stuff. So, <clears throat> yeah, this is working, but it wasn't sounding great. So what I did do, first of all, I adjusted the bias, make sure the bias was right on both channels. And to be honest, there wasn't the miles out. There was about, uh, one was, I think, measured 17 milliamps. And the other one, uh, is it milliamps? Did I measure this with? Or uh, where's my meter? Just double check. Sometimes I measure milliamps and sometimes we're measuring... Uh, DC and yeah milliamps was measuring here just to make sure someone did measure millivolts but DC milliamps I was measuring supposed to be 15 I think one was 17 one channel and one was 18 they're very close anyway but I did uh, adjust them spot on uh, also this board that you do the measuring on and where the a uh, couple of transistors I took out I'll tell you about them transistors in a minute why I took them out as well is uh, is actually pushed in uh, on a uh, on a what do you call it? Um, a strip. What do they call it? A connector, connection block, edge connection block. Uh, it's pushed in there. And uh, this was nice, obviously, to take this board out. And it'd be nice if some more boards were here. You could just whip them out, do the soldering and whatever you work on, and just put them straight back in. That'd be fantastic. So, um, yeah, the reason I've changed the train. So, oh, yeah, but going back to that. So, I cleaned the edge connector and I cleaned all along here. A bit like the old Nintendo carts. You used to get a cloth in there and I have a bit of uh, contact cleaner. Go along and uh, with the white cloth which I haven't got here Andy, there was like quite brown kind of blackish kind of dirt, you know what I mean, that kind of like dirt you get on these kind of boards that builds up over time. So I did uh, clean that up as well. So I want to mention that. Did clean some of these controls that I could get to and ones that could be cleaned, they've been cleaned as well. So that's what I've done there. But I don't think it's made a vast, it may just come into the equation a little bit. I don't think it's made a vast amount of difference to be honest with me doing all that, but it may have just slightly uh, done something. So I just wanted to mention that so you know what's been happening. Uh, but the thing is, I changed two transistors, and the reason were that I was getting very, very slight. It wasn't a lot. It was a very, very slight popping coming from both channels. One was slightly louder than the other, but they, they were faint. They were faint. They weren't from a meter away. You wouldn't even know it was happening. You have to get your ear right up against the speaker, get the old headphones on. This would be the volume on zero. We won't have to have volume up at all. With the volume zero, it's a very, very faint clicking going on, little popping. And looking at the circuit diagram, which I did before I actually bought the amplifier, I knew they had these kind of famous. Uh, transistors that are famous for uh, being noisy which is the 2SC458 and there this part of the circuit diagram here this is just one channel this is transistor 801 I think it's 808 on the other side and this is from the pre-out uh, to the main input and this is the first transistor in the circuit that it comes to there's only one of them each channel so I know these are probably it's not a certainty but it's probably the culprit so replacing them would be a good idea. Get that little bit of faint popping out of the way. There's something else out of the equation. I wasn't expecting it to change any of the sound whatsoever. So uh, I, when I've done a few other videos changing these, I usually use a 2SC2240, but I didn't have any of them in stock. Uh, all I had was a 2SC1815 um, or a KSC1845. Both are okay uh, for this transistor replacement. 
So I chose the 1845 only because it's the first one I got to, and I had a big strip, big strip of them. There was easy enough for me to find in my little box. I keep all my bits and pieces in. I stuck that in there, plugged the board in, and listened to the amplifier or receiver, shall we say? But we call it amplifier. And to my surprise, uh, the boomy bass had disappeared, which was uh, which was okay, but it wasn't great because most of the bass disappeared. Uh, it, was, it, was, it was weird. I had to try, uh, turn this uh, bass control up probably to about three o'clock to get the bass to come back in. And it did sound clearer, but it just wasn't that sensory bass, you know what I mean? It just wasn't that big bass, that bass. It wasn't there. Uh, top end was still a bit on the bright side as well. Uh, so it wasn't quite right, you know what I mean? It wasn't quite right, but I was amazed that that transistor, you know, from that boomy bass, that the original one in there, to put in this transistor in, uh, made that difference. So uh, just a matter of interest, I didn't have the 2240, but like I said, I did have the uh, 1815. I thought, well, let's, let's just stick that in for a matter of curiosity more than anything else. Uh, stuck that in, plonked it back in there. And to my surprise, um, you're gonna have to probably trust me on this because I haven't recorded anything or anything like that, but uh, give it a go yourself, I'm sure. Uh, especially if you're replacing this transistor. But the point of the video is that you, you may want to try, you know, looking at a few replacement transistors that you can choose from they're not expensive a pound or so each that you could try one then the other uh, especially with this sansui stuff that's kind of got that mid-range kind of uh, mid, mid bass should i say that, that that kind of sansui bass that it kind of got lost with that 1845 but came back uh with the 1815 and also came back clearer so that boomy bass had gone uh came back the bass is back could get me bass control back to center I still found that uh, the top end was a little bit on the bright side and I wasn't getting the silky kind of smooth, that kind of silky smooth sound uh, from the female vocals that I was getting with the 101. Uh, it's a little bit, it, it wasn't bad, it was pretty, no, it wasn't bad at all, don't get me wrong, but it's just a little bit out, a little, little bit on the arse side, just a little bit creeping a little bit on the arse side, but we're much better to what it was, it's much better to what it was. And I think if you went and bought this, if I plug that in there and you come around and bought this, or you, you've got this as is, you'll be pretty happy with it. You know, most people will probably be pretty happy with it, but uh, I'm just expecting just a little bit more, like I say, silky smooth, uh, on, especially on the female vocals. Um, so that's what I'm kind of aiming for, but I think it's, it's a tall ask, I think, for when you're talking the same, that's quite old. But uh, like I say, today's video really was about the difference that two transistors was made. I haven't got the 2240, so now I'm gonna order that. Uh, there's no rush for it, because the next thing I'm gonna do is probably just change the lights in here. And also there's a little link I can do on the input select, looking at the circuit diagram, that I can keep the lights on all the time, no matter what input I've got on. So I think it's just a little bridge of a link. So I will be doing that as well. I'll probably bring that to the channel, uh, replacing the bulb maybe as well. Uh, I'll probably do that in one or something like that. Just a quick video. But uh, I will be tinkering around a little bit more with this bulb because it's got quite a few capacitors on there that can be tinkered around with. Uh, one other thing I did forget to mention. I did, uh, did, did uncouple a couple of these uh, capacitors just to test them out on my meter. And they seem fine, to be honest with you. They seem fine. And also I'll check some voltages uh, going to the main amplifier. Uh, preamplifier and that uh, looked at the circuit diagram and checked some voltages make sure I'm getting the correct voltage because it was under voltage uh, say for instance I know it's I can't remember exactly what it was but it was supposed to be 50 volts and you're only getting 35 or something like that then it would obviously affect the sound uh, probably get a little bit of distortion that kind of thing coming in so I did check the voltages and they were, I won't say they're spot on but they're pretty close uh, to being okay kind of thing so that's something else I did do and something worth doing as well is checking the voltage going to these different boards and that uh, in the amplifier circuit just in case you've got a, you know, a really low voltage all of a sudden you're getting distortion and that uh, thinking that something else and it's just the power supply not supplying the correct voltage uh, maybe one of the, the transistors uh, in the power supply that's uh, going gong or whatever uh, not working as it should do and you're getting under volts you know the, the voltage uh, under what it should be so it's worth checking out as well or a bit intermittent that kind of stuff so check that out as well which i did before i um, kind of done anything else but uh, like i say just the main thing is really in this video here is just on this board here just changing two trans i haven't changed anything else just changing two transistors um and having a having a comparison between two replacements that two sc uh, let's just get these numbers right 2sc1815 compared with that ksc1845 which are both common substitutes for this transistor and in my case the 1815 was the better choice uh got that base back so uh that is the video uh now 
when I do these videos, you know, you talk about the sound and that, it's, it's some people is not going to do the experiment themselves or whatever, maybe thinking, really, Mick, a transistor's changed that, that, you know, the bass has disappeared all of a sudden, you brought another transistor in and it's come back. What I would say is that uh, that did happen. And what I would say is that get these yourself. If you're doing these repairs yourself, they're not, I'm, I'm not going to ask you to spend another 50 quid or something, just another pound. And it's going to take you a few more minutes just to take one out and compare it to the other one kind of thing. Do it yourself. And I think, you, you know, obviously depending on what receiver and whatever, and, and to, to, you know, don't be rude or anything else to what you're listening to. Don't be rude or anything like that. I mean, some people would, how can you say, would be happy for what it is. And, and some people may not hear the difference as other people definitely would hear the difference. But I think you're going to hear the, the bass difference there. You, you, there is a bass difference and you're going to hear it. Uh, there so that is it that's, the, that's today's video um, so I hope you found that pretty interesting which I did which is surprising a bit and afterwards one other thing I did do I mean I forgot to mention as well afterwards I did go on the forums and I do like looking around the forums and uh, searching the difference between the 18515 and all this you know all these numbers kind of thing and there was a couple uh, on there that did have a sound series I think they had a 2000 unit saying that they did notice a difference uh, one particular chap I think he, he, he put this 1815 in one part of the circuit and it was more bassier and he put a 1845 in another part of the circuit to kind of try and balance it out kind of thing. It is on there, it is on one of the forums. If you've done a search or something, you'll probably see it. Uh, so yeah, it's worth experimenting around. That's why I think you should do one bit at a time, I say just changing this one transistor first of all, rather than doing too much stuff because then you can't backtrack. Where well, this bloke put this in and he's backtracking, he's, he's, he's doing a balancing act, where one part of the circuit's give too much bass, he's kind of counterbalanced it with another part of the circuit that's kind of got rid of that too much bass and leveled it out kind of thing. Uh, that kind of stuff, um, I think you know what I'm trying to talk about uh, amongst all that. Uh, but yeah, a definite, a definite improvement, not quite there yet, but a definite improvement and uh, a surprise to me anyway that these, these transistors, um, I might keep rattling on about it, but there was a change. Uh, from that base, one minute it's kind of disappeared, the next minute it's come back. Okay, I've rattled on a long enough, supposed to be a short video, Mick. Next time, I'll probably like say, do the bulbs, I'll do a bit more tinkering around, let you know I'm getting on with it. Over a period of time, I've got one more amplifier I want to bring to the channel, and that is going to be it, I think. I keep saying it, but that's going to be it. I want to talk about something else completely different on the channel, something that you're probably not going to be interested in, not many people will be interested in, but something I've, I've kind of worked, so I've been in the industry for 30 odd years, I'm going to give my thoughts experiences and maybe warnings as well uh, on this subject uh, and um, have a little bit of a experiment as well I think uh, just give me something to do really uh, because I think you know sometimes a change is good as a rest I've been doing this for four years doing something else for a little while then maybe coming back to it in six months time or something like that a change is good as a rest that's what I'm hoping for until the next video I'll say thanks for watching and I'll see you all soon